<laughs> it's good. I gave her some cakes that the kitchen gave to me because I don't eat a lot of cake. I don't really like sweet. Also, it makes me fat. <laughs> I say I eat too much already, and she says she eat more, even more. I said, no problem, she don't have to be model. Yeah? I do many jobs. Model, modeling is one of my jobs. I can't eat a lot. Uh, for her, no problem. If she gets fat, just buy new clothes. Huh? <laughs> yeah, for me, okay, also maybe if I get fat, I can design new clothes. But I don't have too much time to keep measuring, you know? <laughs> so it's better to stay a little slim. <laughs> More convenient. Ah, brother from Hong Kong. Is your sister here? No? Take turn this time? It's your turn? Okay. Oh, last time I forgot one story. This story is supposed to follow the uh, story called The Afflictions by Supani in the temple. Yes. But I, I probably you know, over flap the page, so I read it for you today. This story is, has a better title, a more positive title. Oh, the Hufa has a translation, yeah? Okay, one year translation, one year for order, yep. Otherwise, just standing there, understand nothing, feel very boring. So you can do three jobs now, so join my club, okay? Listening. <laughs> Taking order and watching, huh? Wow, you already have three jobs, don't complain. I have many jobs. I cannot list it all, yeah? Dogs, caretaker, <laughs> house cleaner, helper for the dogs, uh, model, designer for jewelry, wearing jewelry. Oh, I don't have time to wear jewelry, but designer for clothes, uh, modeling for clothes, uh, what else? A lecturer, yeah. Uh, initiation master, uh, a meditator, yogi, yogis, yeah, sounds better. Uh, what else do I have to do? Uh, uh, Sometimes uh, a psychological counselor, yeah. What else? Wow, yes, the list goes on, yeah? Okay. <laughs> I don't want to scare you. <laughs> In case you want to be a master, so, okay, the list we just stop here and you imagine more, okay? Now, let's go. Ha! Ah, today I have a friend matching my clothes. Very good. Living Astikram. Remember that? That was the village where they call by this name, Astikram. Meaning the village of bones. <laughs> Remember last time there was the demons who lived there? and eating people up, whoever went there. So they call it Asikram. And the master Mahavira already subdued this demon, huh? and he became a good boy, yeah? <laughs> and not uh, eating people anymore. In the old time, even humans in some places were eating humans. In the old time, you know, it's very bad, but people were still eating people. Yeah, and now we, we, the civilized society, looked upon it as barbarous, yeah? We don't do this anymore. 
even in remote area of the world, don't have that anymore. Well, not that we know of, because we are more civilized now, we look upon such a practice as barbarous. In soon future, we will look upon eating animal flesh also as barbarous and pray God that it will be very, very soon. Yeah. Terrible. Yeah, our world is getting better, better, yes. And many animals' laws are being proposed or being implemented and maybe being practiced. Yeah, yeah a little bit somewhere. But that's already a very good step. I say they should practice it. Some governments, some nations already advocate and put it into laws, you know, to protect animals. But just one more step, then is ban altogether any killing of animals or torturing animals in an uh, animal factory, for example. So I think uh, the governments of this country who who advocate animals' laws and protections are very, very uh, good already. Maybe one day they will ban altogether any form of torture or killing of any kind, then it would be perfect. Yes, I will give that country hundreds of uh, shining world leadership award for compassion, for love, for wisdom, for... Uh, a hero for whatever, <laughs> the best. <laughs> and I hope other countries also follow suit to make more laws to protect the weak and innocent, as well as to implement it, to practice it. Otherwise, it would be hypocrite, right? <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Sorry if I offend any of one, any of the governments or people, but it's the way it is, right? You say you protect the animals, and all the while just keep quietly condoning the practice of harassing, torturing, you know, killing, maiming animals. So what is that then, huh? I really was very reluctant to say such thing, but I don't know, sometimes <laughs> the truth is keep coming out. <laughs> I'm in trouble all the time because of that. Even heaven just warned me two days ago. They told me <laughs> to be safe. Because I told them I don't care. And they say, yeah, you don't care, but you have to be safe for the world, because you still have work to do. Yeah, that makes sense, but still, I cannot help it sometimes to speak the truth because, uh, yeah, that's what it's all about, no? Democracy, freedom of speech, truth, practicing, stuff like that. Okay, forget it then, mm, for now. I guess the people who bring this regulation into law, they really want it, the nation to practice it. It just, you know, a government body is a complex, system, yeah? So maybe some pro, some against. I have been tolerating everything since many decades, yeah? And because of tolerance, I have almost died many times. I have been sick, gravely ill many times, and have been uh, uh, blackened my name many times, uh, and also uh, obstructed to give you a better teaching, you know, a smoother, more inspired, and deeper teaching, yeah, because of tolerance. So I think from now on, I have been, since we have this ashram, I have been practicing less tolerance for the sake of everyone else who are sincere, who truly take their time and have courage to come. Mm? 
to leave behind everything, either to work for the world or to come here to better themselves. And in our group, we have 60, I don't know, I don't have my diary here, I wrote it down. Okay, 60 plus percent are good, truly, uh, sincerely want to go home and to practice goodness and to hear the truth and try to implement the truth in their lives. Sixty some percent. I'm very, very lucky and very grateful indeed, okay? And the other, the other thirty plus percent are not so, okay? Either they just join for fun or just have nothing else to do or just shop around <laughs> or just come in to make trouble or just to like to be with the crowd. Also, maybe just to profit from uh, like good energy, but not doing anything to contribute to it. On the contrary, uh, damaging it somehow. Okay? So for the sake of the majority, I was since a uh, few months, uh, and from now on also, I will screen out as much as I can to protect the majority of people who are really worthy, yeah, of heaven's grace and blessing, and my time. I consider my time very, very precious. Every minute when I remember my age, I feel my time is running so fast and so precious that I can't afford to waste it just to entertain some some anybody, some, you know, busy body or bore, boring body or bored body or obstructive body, understand? Uh, in order to protect you and my time and my practice and my work, my inside work, okay? For these people, I do not reject them outright. Just they should practice at home or in some smaller centers where they don't affect too much the outcome of your practice and my sincere uh, dedication to offer you what I know. So anyway, they have got initiation, they're free to do what I, they want to do with it, but they're not free to come in the big assembly and make in trouble, yeah, and ruin our atmosphere and damage your uh, practice result. You agree with that? Yes. Okay. So, do not keep telling me that this sister is good, and that brother is the best, and he's working diligently, and he uh, always goes to group meditation. That means nothing to me if the inside has not changed for the better, or not sincere. Outside is difficult to judge whether or not a person is good or not. Truly like that. Even, even I was fooled many times, because I also look in outside. And only until maybe I talk to that person or something happened that I have to check it out, then I know it's only outwardly look good, seems good, but the inside is still nowhere. Number one, because um, not sincere, joining maybe because of a beautiful girl or a handsome boy, or just have nothing better to do, or just like to be in the crowd. You know, some people like to be in the crowd and make themselves more famous for doing something and <laughs> looking good, so it looked like good, you know, for some other purposes. But not sincerely uh, here for a real thing. And they are also, just like uh, all the Master when they came to our planet, they give generously initiation, yeah, and offer it to the public at large without discriminating who is what. Yeah, and who did what, and 
just giving everyone a chance to uh, to know this uh, method and then to be able to practice. But not everyone took it seriously. The same with Sekamoni Buddha, even his cousin, always tried to harm him, did nothing good. Always jealous with the Buddha, because the Buddha has uh, uh, many admirers, many followers, and many disciples who worship him and uh, who practice with him with all 100% faith, or um, over 100% faith and vigor. And he uh, looked like nobody followed him, maybe only his servants. Uh, maybe nobody loves him, maybe his mother does. Yeah. If he has a girlfriend, perhaps. <laughs> we never heard it, that he has any uh, family or romantic relationship. Maybe that's why he's cranky. <laughs> Nobody loved him. Uh, the best place to put him is, is somewhere. So he will not harm anybody. Yeah. Least of all harming the Buddha, you know, the saintly master who has nothing in his heart except to uplift the faithful, yeah, the worthy and the good people and help all the beings as well. Because uh, life after life we will have enemies. The Master also, no exception, yes. So you see, like Devadatta, he follow the Buddha life after life like a shadow. He never ever leave the Master alone, never. <laughs> Even after he became Buddha already, officially, the whole world knows, and he still continue making trouble. Similarly, uh, I also have enemies. There are two kinds of people in our group. Okay. I'm not talking about you. Of course, you also have enemies and friends, and you know that, yeah? In the feng shui school, they teach you to recognize enemies, like anyone next to you always make you angry, for sometimes for reason or for no reason. They call them evil person. Yeah, and they advise you to avoid them, if you can. But if they are your family members, then ah, good luck. There were three kinds of people who will be around you. Ah, four kinds. Yeah? The first one, luckily, if you have friends, okay? Friends doesn't mean the social a cycle that you are in only. It could be your family members. Oh my God, should I read the story or keep going on with my calendar? <laughs> <laughs> calendar? Okay, story won't run away, right? My calendar might, because if somebody make trouble, then I might stop my inspiration somewhere and then the story will get short or nothing. Yeah, it happened many times. <laughs> well, not many times, several times. Either that or the continuous story, bumpy, bumpy. Yeah. <laughs> Four type of people. Four type of beings. Yeah. It could be also people. It could be also invisible beings. It could be also animals, uh, pets. Yeah. Okay. So now, I classify it all in four type of beings. Okay. Because we are all beings human beings, animal beings, ghost beings, or whatever beings, okay, huh? Now, four types. What is four types? The first type is very lucky for us if we have, they call friends. It could be your family members, your son, your husband, your wife, your sister, your brother, eh, your cousin, okay? Devadatta is not classified as friend, <laughs> even though he is a family, so-called clan member uh, of the Oh, Buddha, huh? Okay? So, okay, so friend is good for you. You will notice that they are very helpful to you, very coordinate with you. Uh, you're with them smooth sailing. Of course, they are not perfect, yeah? Don't look at only their mistakes or their faults. You have to look at the big picture, okay? Because you might be very easily mistaken with their personality.